So you want to know how to cure Hashimoto's disease or is it even curable? Well, in this video, we're going to discuss some of the strategies and techniques that we use to cure Hashimoto's disease. We'll talk about uh, what's going on with the immune system to actually cause uh, the this condition to begin with and uh, what are some of the categories of uh, problems that are present to create Hashimoto's to begin with and how you can use signs, symptoms, and labs to devise a treatment plan uh, to cure Hashimoto's. We're all about helping you gain deeper knowledge and understanding of what's going on in your body. That's why we produce these videos. So hopefully this edition gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing these videos and uh, content that sometimes I get a slight thing wrong, like quoting something, a stat or a name of something. And so there's a corresponding blog article on our website, medicine forward slash blog, that has a lot more detail um, and we'll correct those mistakes if there are any. It doesn't happen that often, but sometimes it does. And the blog article will correct for those. Um, so I also wanted to point out that uh, if you like this type of information, please click on the like button um, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you watching. Uh, if you do have any questions uh, about any of the content, either here or on the blog, uh, that's what the comment section is for to ask those questions. So again, thanks for watching and let's dig into it. So when we're thinking about how to cure Hashimoto's disease or what you can do to, to limit or reduce your Hashimoto's activity, antibody activity, we want to think about how did it start to begin with. We really want to drive in that uh, message because there are, there are more than one way that this can be created. And if you don't know how, how it was created, you can sort of treat all these things, but uh, you really want to get at the source of, of why it was there to begin with. Treat that and you should see the numbers come down. Now, sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, and sometimes there are not things you can do to control it. It's, you know, there's just a genetic component, genetic susceptibility, and, you know, the, the, you can't find the actual source. Uh, that being said, there are m many things that you can, many different places you can look for uh, what's driving this increased immune activity against your thyroid. So, so let's uh, kind of talk about that a little bit. So the first one I said already is genetic. That one, you know, you can't really change that. But the things that you can change uh, and, and treat and potentially improve and reduce the immune activity against your thyroid would be things like leaky gut syndrome, which I'll explain in a little more detail here in a minute. Um, uh, mold toxicity, any kind of chronic infection like Epstein-Barr, uh, even chronic strep, uh, cytomegalovirus. So you think bacteria and viruses mainly uh, with that, but there are other, there are other uh, infections that you can have that don't fall into those categories. Generally just think chronic infection. Um, and then uh, there's also, you know, uh, when it, as it relates to uh, leaky gut, there are a number of things that can influence that. So like food sensitivities or food intolerances like gluten and others, um, histamine intolerance, uh, infections in the digestive tract. These are all things that will overstimulate the immune system when they're not properly uh, taken care of. You also, um, Another category of things would be just toxins in general, which, like I said, mold toxicity, but also environmental toxins that maybe you're exposed to on a regular basis, and you have a genetic susceptibility to where you can't eliminate these as efficiently as someone else, uh, perhaps. So these are all the sort of things that uh, can lead to a cross-reaction in your, so your body is trying to attack the toxin or uh, infection or trigger, uh, and each time it sees that, it's going to make antibodies to that. Over time, it may cross-react um, <clears throat> where the antibody is uh, similar protein to what your thyroid gland is, specifically the anti-TPO enzyme and uh, thyroglobulin uh, protein. Um, when there's a similar type of protein on that toxin that is trying to, or, or infection that is trying to eliminate, the immune system is then going to see the, uh, that every time it sees the toxin, it's gonna produce these antibodies that are, instead of 
attacking the toxin, it may attack your thyroid gland. Sometimes it'll do both, but uh, they're very specific to a specific, or the antibodies that are being produced are specific to um, that toxin, but if it's making an antibody that also fits the same uh, uh, structure as your TPO enzyme or thyroglobulin, then you're going to get an attack against your thyroid every time it encounters it being your immune system, one of these foreign invaders. So with that being said, how do you go about actually curing Hashimoto's disease or what, what are some things you can do to reduce the immune activity or the antibody production against your thyroid? And for that, first you want to uh, kind of take it back to the basics. So where is the source of the problem? Uh, so starting with symptoms and signs, uh, history, when it started, uh, and all that. And then you follow that up with labs. Uh, so I'll give you a uh, some examples or some ideas uh, around that. So do, do you have any digestive symptoms uh, like gas, bloating, changes in stools, things like that. Um, if you do, then you definitely want to start with that. So you can do some follow-up testing to see if, uh, you know, you have some uh, increased bacterial overgrowth or fungal overgrowth. You could do stool testing. You can uh, also do a leaky gut test. Um, and you don't necessarily have to do all these, but the uh, the overall picture will sort of lead you in a direction of which one is going to be most likely to be positive. You know, when you have Hashimoto's, we automatically assume there is some leaky gut until we know that there's not. Um, so that might be, if you don't have digestive symptoms, you might want to do that test to rule that out. And if it's not there, then you can move on to some of the other things. Some of the other things being, uh, toxic burden. Uh, so if you have elevated liver enzymes, that would suggest toxic burden. Um, and, uh, but if you have, uh, you know, you, you could have leaky gut causing the toxic burden. So you don't want to necessarily just, uh, assume that it's only toxicity, but toxins come from all over uh, our environment. Uh, they can come from, you know, something uh, inside your body like auto, auto intoxication. Uh, they can come from foods, uh, all sorts of sources for that. Um, and then the last would be uh, just looking for chronic infections on their own, like Epstein-Barr, cytom cytomegalovirus, Lyme's disease, um, all kinds of different uh, bugs that could be lingering in your body uh, for long periods of time on a, a low grade uh, to uh, just sort of kick in your immune system periodically um, and uh, you know, cause the uh, autoantibodies to be produced and attack your thyroid gland in, you know, a sort of uh, cyclical way. Um, usually the symptoms with that are going to be, you know, like a kind of feeling like you're uh, sick when you're not, low-grade fever, that kind of thing. Um, and that can happen with the digestive stuff too. Uh, but if you, you know, clear you don't have that, then you would move on to some of these. So there you go. All right, so thank you again for watching. Hopefully this gives you a little bit more concrete information on what sort of testing and things you can be doing to find out how to get those thyroid uh, antibody levels coming down and overall improve your thyroid function. I didn't give specific treatment plan uh, ideas because there's so many different uh, options out there. It really depends what's going on with your specific situation. Also, you know, sometimes things can steer into uh, territories that are, you know, um, you, you need really need to understand what's going on with the thyroid and other parts of your body to know what to do next. Um, it's not a really a one-size-fits-all uh, plan. Uh, you really do need to be working with somebody, but this should give you uh, some good information to ask the right questions and get an understanding on what's going on with the thyroid to create this problem to begin with. Um, that being said, if you do have questions uh, about something that's going on with your uh, specific situation, Feel free to ask them in the comment section. I'll do my best to advise.